decisive measures are needed to raise Europe's competitiveness in order to support higher levels of productivity, employment and prosperity. Infrastructure investment is uh, today 20% lower than pre-crisis. Good quality infrastructure is uh, at the basis for long-term potential growth. We see an innovation gap for Europe and it's particularly um, in evidence when we look at uh, companies' uptake of information technology and digital. Going forward, these are really going to be the key ways in which companies remain competitive. The biggest impediments to firms' investment is availability of people with the right skills, and we have 72% of firms that are complaining for this issue. Investment is recovering, but the quality also of investment is important. You know, new technologies, the diffusion of technologies, the skilled jobs, the retraining of people. Climate investment is the lowest in the last five years. If Europe wants to get the 2030 target, there is much more to be done. The capital market union is not finalized. Access to finance has been improved very much also for SMEs. What is weaker in general is equity finance and risk Capital. It's really a systemic problem of, of uh, lack of incentives to innovate, but also enough uh, capacity to innovate, access to skills, access to finance. So it's actually a systemic problem of multiple dimensions. Investment levels have not yet recovered to the levels that were seen before the economic crisis and are certainly not at the levels uh, that Europe is going to need if we're to address the challenges of the 21st century. The IB helps to deliver growth, jobs and cohesion in Europe by addressing economic and social imbalances, by promoting the knowledge economy, skills and innovation, and by linking regional and national connectivity. A more resilient Europe requires a more inclusive and cohesive Europe.